Alrighty guys, today we have a collaboration for y'all that was years in the making. Back in my old shop, I forged a piece of twist Damascus, which I sent to Jeremy at Simple Little Life. He then took that piece of Damascus and turned it into a phenomenal work of art. So a little backstory here, I actually got into making knives in 2005 after watching the movie The Hunted. After which I had a long break in the middle from knife making to go and study engineering in college. Ah, thanks. I needed that. After that, in 2018, I decided to start getting back into the craft. When I did this, I scoured the internet, I looked over YouTube and all the videos I could find, which was a lot more expansive at this point than when I started in 2005. In 2005, it was mostly just internet forums like Blade Forums, which is a great source of information but the YouTube world really brought a lot of new tips and tricks to the forefront. One of these channels I found was Jeremy's channel, Simple Little Life, and I learned a ton of tips and tricks in watching his videos, as well as getting the motivation to get back into my shop. For these reasons, I'm extremely thankful to Jeremy for putting out that content, and if you're not following him currently, you should pause this video and get that done. Don't cost nothing. Coming up, I'm going to be narrating in detail the process of making the piece of Damascus that I sent to Jeremy. This will be a little nostalgic for me since I shot most of the footage in my old shop, so I'll be watching it along with y'all. At the end of the video, I'll show some glamour shots of Jeremy's finished knife, and I'll give my thoughts on his build. So with that, let's jump in. From my experience so far making Damascus, there are a handful of methods and tips that I've found to greatly increase success. I'll for sure point them out as I go, but I also wanted to state them up front so that they can be in the back of your head as you watch the footage. The first two pillars to an efficient pattern welded steel is cleanliness and flatness. All pieces of your stack should be ground and cleaned before attempting a forge weld. A surface grinding attachment for a 2x72 belt grinder really shines for this operation. It will allow you to get all your pieces evenly ground and ready for stacking quickly. In my opinion, this task alone justifies the cost of a surface grinding attachment. That is, if you plan on making a significant amount of pattern welded steel. The next key suggestion I have is to take care of your welded stack. I like to grind down the welds a little before forge welding in order to reduce the amount of low quality material in the finished product. I also like to soak my billets for a bit in kerosene instead of using borax as flux when I can. From what I understand, the mechanism here is that the kerosene ignites upon entry into the forge and eliminates any oxygen in between the layers, which can lead to poor welds. It's also much cleaner to use and won't damage the lining of your forge like borax does. In addition to kerosene, you want to make sure that you're running a rich mixture on your forge, meaning you want a high ratio of propane to air. This will also contribute to less oxygen in the forge and better welds. The first press of a fresh stack is very important. I like to lightly press the first weld with as much surface area contact as possible on my dies. I'll do a few heats where all I'm doing is lightly pressing one or two times to make sure the weld is set. In this case, I used this seven inch angle grinder from Harbor Freight to grind off my MIG welds after I knew the stack was nice and solid. I've forgone this step in later builds without issue, but it really depends on the pattern you're trying to go for. I feel like this is a conservative option and I can't afford to waste time in the shop with mistakes. I then drew out my two nine layer billets. I know I showed it at the start of the video, but if you missed it, these are eighth of an inch thick by one and one half of an inch wide pieces of 1084 and 15 and 20 alternated. Another method I've found useful when making Damascus is to use a steel brush in between drawing cycles. This reduces the large scale buildup on the surface that can be pressed into your work. If you forego this brushing and push the scale into the billets, you'll have to grind away more material in the leveling process before your next stack. I drew the billets out with my combo dies, and when I got closer to the final dimensions, I started using kiss blocks. This will allow you to have billets with a consistent thickness, thus reducing the material waste. The real name of the game with the cutting and stacking iterations is reducing your material waste and reducing the amount of grinding you need to do. Having flat billets with a consistent thickness goes a long way here. Damascus cleanup is exactly what I bought this large 7 inch angle grinder for, and it did a great job. I'm basically grinding until I have clean steel across the whole length of the billet. In the past, when I didn't focus on the steps we just talked about, this step could take a pretty long time. After rough angle grinding, I cut these billets into 8 equal pieces, surface ground them, and restacked into one large billet that will yield 72 layers. Note that when welding up the first billets, I put a weld down the side to hold the thin pieces together when heating up in the forge. 
but with these thick layers in my stack, I found that's not necessary. For some reason, I used Mule Team Borax for flux with this weld, but in today's world, I just use kerosene again. I may have done this in order to gauge temperatures in the forge, since the visual state of borax can be indicative of forge welding heat. Either way, it got the job done. The steps here are very similar to the first round. I made sure to lightly set the welds with the first heat or two, and then proceeded to draw out the billet using the same principles I mentioned earlier about scale, uniformity, and flatness. At this point in the process, in order to show y'all what a piece of 72 layer Damascus looks like, I surface ground the billet and etched it in ferric chloride. You can see that at this low layer count, there are very bold layers. I've actually made a few knives with low layer count random patterns, and they came out looking pretty cool in my opinion. But beauty is in the eye of the beholder when it comes to pattern welded steel. I cut this billet into three pieces, stacked, and welded it. This will yield us a final billet with 216 layers. Now at this point, I decided to experiment a little bit with making a twister. In my monkey brain, I thought I could make an attachment for a hand drill and twist my billets. I just drilled and tapped a coupling and welded a socket on it for my drill. Spoiler alert, it did not work how I planned, and you will see that in a minute. I didn't show it, but this three-stack billet was soaked in kerosene before getting into the forge. She heated up, and I set the forge wells on the press just like normal, and then drew it out into a square bar. Note the drawing process here is started off by making it into one large square bar, and then I knock the corners off to make it round. This will prevent any cold shuts along the edges of the bar when twisting, which will reduce material loss during cleanup. With the bar drawn out, I clamped it in my press and attempted to twist it with my rigged up drilling attachment using both my drill and impact. Clearly part of the problem here was the large diameter of my billet. If I'm going to be using a hand twister like this, the OD of my billets will have to be much smaller. I also had a hard time getting a good bite on the end of the billet with the twister tool. So I called in an audible and resorted to the tried and true pipe wrench twisting method. With the bar twisted, I drew it out to a very flat and thick piece and then let it cool down so that I can grind out any imperfections from the twisting before drawing it out to its finished dimensions. It's better to catch them here before getting your final billet thin and then finding some large imperfections. I then forge it down to around a quarter of an inch and surface ground the whole piece. To give y'all and Jeremy an idea of the pattern before he makes a knife out of it, I etch it in a solution of 50-50 ferric chloride and water. In between a few 15 minute cycles, I cleaned up the billet with some 2500 grit sandpaper. At the end before shipping it, I made sure to neutralize the acid with Windex containing ammonia and some baking soda. Overall, I'm very happy with how this billet came out. The next time I do a twisted billet, I think I'll add some more twist in there, but other than that, I'm proud of this bar. I then shipped this bar to Jeremy and he proceeded to turn it into a true work of art. I'm only showing a few clips of his build here, but trust me, if you made it far into my footage, you're going to really love his video. He turned it into a kitchen knife with a really cool little integral, which is something I never would have thought of doing. He fought some adversity with warping and showed off his bulletproof method of fitting up wall style handles. The profile is sleek and the knife looks like it will be handy in his kitchen. Clearly most of the work of this collaboration came out of Jeremy's shop and I commend him on a beautiful finished product. I'll have a link to his build video in the description and top comment below. If y'all enjoyed this collab, please consider liking the videos and subscribing to our channels. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.